so we have a lot of millennials in our ecosystem and audience. I think we pretty much only work, we have like one person on our team that's a Gen X like us. Everybody else is millennial, I think, which is great. I mean, I, like, I don't hate millennials at all. I love millennials. They're great. <laughs> work with them. I don't hate millennials. I, I don't hate millennials. I, some of my best friends are millennials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, I guess I'm speaking to what you said a little earlier. I don't know why I went off that tangent. <laughs> Side note uh, over there, back to the main th- thing. Uh, we have a lot of millennials in our audience and they come to our workshops, our mentorships, our programs, our events, and they'll come into the microphone or they'll come up and talk to us. And we'll work with them one-on-one or in a group. And I can't tell you how many millennials, especially in the last year or two, since lockdown started and the pandemic and all of that, say, do I have to change the world? Am I allowed to just like mm-hmm. be a mom or can I just be a school teacher or can I just work this job in my town and just affect the people close to me? And it seems like there's something there too for millennials. There's a wisdom in maybe what has to happen. I'm positing this. I don't know. What has to happen is the idealism that I'm going to be the hero that will save the world right. has to be let go of. And then when I let go of that as a millennial, I can step into the hero that will save my world, the world that I actually can affect and have influence around. But that requires me to step into my own authority, which will possibly remove my ability to have that idealism in front of me anymore because maybe my social group at large will punish me for it. They won't allow me to assert individual authority. So I'll have to play a smaller game to be able to bring that authority forward. And so that's the trade-off. To be able to step into my authority, I have to bring it smaller. I don't have, I can't have the big pie in the sky vision anymore for myself, and all the credit I'm going to get when I fix it all out here. And yet, I'm going to actually have some change. I'm going to actually make an effect in the people around me and the systems that I actually operate in. Right. Well, because it won't be a performance. Yeah. Right. It'll be real. Authentic. Yeah. It'll be authentic It'll be and real, which I think real I. I feel the world right now is just starving for authenticity. Mm-hmm. The real thing, not just pe- somebody being authentic. And I think we have started defining that as being vulnerable mm-hmm. and willing to talk about your problems. That is a brand of authenticity, but another brand of authenticity is something that's actually happening in real life. Mm-hmm. And so as opposed to adulting, it's being an adult. Yeah. It's not performing it out today, mm-hmm. right? And then at the end of the day, like, covering your head with covers Mm -hmm. it's no i am this is the real deal and and i'm the only i'm the there's no calvary coming again Mm -hmm. i am the one who's going to be at the 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 leading my life Mm -hmm. and that's honest and authentic it's up to me i gotta do it yeah how old are you i'm 37 and you just said a phrase i wrote it down i'm an adult now and yeah. I put quotes around it. I'm like, really? You just had that? I mean, you didn't just have that realization, but I in some feel, ways you did. I honestly feel like I've feel like I've been an adult in the last year. And that sounds crazy to me in retrospect, even yeah. in such short retrospect. But it's that idea of adulting. It's like you were playing this role. And it's and it's you're talking with your friends about it. Like, are we doing it right? Like, what does this look like? What is what does being an adult look like? Partially because like, yeah, we don't have the systems of before. So we're trying to figure out what does the new performance look like? We're almost doing a collective, what is this supposed to be? But then at the same time for me and individually, you know, as I started to work through stuff with my dad and my parents and forgiveness and not blaming them and taking personal responsibility, it's like, yeah, this is on me. I had a moment a, a week or so so ago where I was sitting in front of my computer and working and my kids were in the living room and my wife came home and I was like, oh, I'm a dad of three kids. <laughs> it's on me. It's on my shoulders. I got to do this. Like there's more at stake. And, but it's also at the same time, less than the grand illusion vision that than what's at stake. Yeah. Like my world is so much more potent and bigger than the collective world in my eyes. And so from that, from nurturing my kids, from nurturing and supporting my wife and the people I work with here with you guys and the people we talk to on the podcast and do the work for like that has systems effects. Mm -hmm. And while it's still very much the programming in me to be the hero and to want to, you know, to, to do that and perform and to provide some sort of feeling that I'm making some sort of impact, uh, I can do that in a way that doesn't undermine me. Yeah. 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 And it all feels real. It's all real. Yeah. Right. It's a, and so when you step up into, you know, I'll say this as the Gen X big sister, right? Um, when you step into all of that and you make it happen and you look back and you're like, wow, I've, I actually got through a lot. 
that's where fulfillment comes. That's where self-confidence comes. And then you're no longer triggered by other people's concepts of authority because you're not, you, there's no fear you're going to hand yourself over to them. Mm -hmm. There's no need to, mm -hmm. like you have your own authority. Right. And I don't have to lean on narratives of deserving of, of making up victimhood narratives of like my parents did this to me or the school system or whatever, which there are truths to those things, but I can actually narrow it in and actually focus on my own trajectory hmm. and actually, you know, kind of, uh, <laughs> get what I deserve for lack of a better way to put it. Or, or what's been earned. What's been earned. Yeah. 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 Like you can actually earn something. Right. Right. And that goes back to the, everybody gets a trophy. Right. Right. It's like, there's a, there's a beauty in earning. Right. And if everybody got a trophy, there was a lot of unearned credit and that feels hollow and you can feel it. Right. Uh, and when you become an adult and you take your own authority, now you start legitimately earning things and there's a sense of fulfillment and there's no fear that you're going to dance, like perform for somebody else because mm -hmm. you don't need to, mm -hmm. right? You're doing your own thing. Absolutely. Yeah.